Hi, welcome to Bookie. To unlock more world-class bestseller, please download our app. Just search for B-O-O-K-E-Y at Apple Store or Google Play. You will get 7 days free trail with more features. Today we will unlock the book The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich, which is about the history of the birth and decline of Nazi Germany. Everyone views World War II as the biggest war in human history. The conflict erupted in 1939 and ended in 1945. More than 60 countries and regions participated in the war, affecting more than 2 billion people. According to incomplete statistics, both sides in the war deployed more than 100 million troops in total. The war caused more than 90 million casualties. The direct cost of the war was 1.35 trillion US dollars, and the economic losses exceeded 4 trillion US dollars. As the main initiator of World War II, the Third Reich only existed for 12 years and 4 months. Still, it created an appalling disaster for humanity. William Shirer's The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich is an important book that highlights this frightening chapter in history. By citing a wide range of secret documents, private diaries, conference reports, and records of interrogation, the book chronicles the entire process of the rise and fall of the Third Reich for readers, presenting a magnificent historical picture of World War II. This book is widely recognized as the most authoritative work on Nazi Germany due to its large amount of information based on authentic files. The author of this book William Shirer was a famous American foreign correspondent, news analyst, and historian on modern world history. During World War II, he served as a war correspondent for the Columbia Broadcasting System. He lived and worked in Germany for a long time and experienced Hitler's reign of the Third Reich up close. With the fall of the Third Reich in the spring of 1945, most of the confidential files of the German government were seized by the U.S. First Army. These files also included a total of 485 tons of classified records from Nazi Germany's Foreign Office, the Army, and the Secret Police. All the documents lay sealed in a U.S. Army warehouse in Alexandria, Virginia. After the end of World War II, with the initiative of the American Historical Association and funding from private foundations, these Nazi documents were opened. As one of the few historians granted access, William Shire had the honor of reading many of Nazi Germany's confidential files. Through reading and organizing the archives, William Shire completed the historical masterpiece The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich after years of laborious writing. The New York Times praised him as an extraordinary historian who could integrate living witnesses with historical facts. In this bookie, we will examine the book The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich throughout the following historical periods. Section 1, The Rise of Hitler and His Seizure of Power. Section 2, The Beginning of the War and Early Victory. Section 3, The Turning Point of the War and the Fall of the Third Reich. To fully understand the history of the Third Reich, we need to start with Hitler's childhood and early years. On April 20, 1889, Adolf Hitler was born in the town of Braunau am Inn, located near the Rhine River on the Austro-German frontier. Nobody could have foreseen that the offspring of an Austrian peasant would later become the leader of the Nazi party and the Chancellor of Germany. Hitler did not come from a privileged background. His father Alois was a minor Austrian customs official who had been born an illegitimate child. His mother Clara Poles originated from a family that had worked as farmers for generations. At the age of 11, Hitler was sent to high school at Linz by his father, who hoped his son would follow his footsteps and become a civil servant. However, Hitler did not want to be a civil servant, but decided to become a painter. To force his father to give up the idea of making him a public servant, Hitler began to rebel against him. He stopped studying in school and got awful grades. Later, Hitler transferred to a state high school at Steyr, some distance from Linz. But he only stayed there briefly and left before graduating. In January 1903, Hitler's father died of pulmonary hemorrhage. Three years later, the 17-year-old Hitler traveled to Vienna alone and embarked on a journey to pursue his dream of being an artist. 
Hitler roamed the streets of Vienna for days, obsessed with the sight of the imposing buildings. This poor peasant boy from provincial Austria was enthralled by the superb view of the capital city's museums and opera house. Meanwhile, he took an entrance examination twice for the Vienna Academy of Fine Arts. Still, he failed to enroll at the school due to his weak foundation in art. In the end, this derailed his plans to become an artist. Within two years, Hitler's mother also passed away. This dealt another mighty blow to Hitler who was only 19 years old at that time. In early 1909, Hitler bid farewell to his deceased mother, and once again set out alone for Vienna. However, the following four years in Vienna turned out to be a time of utter misery for him. Hitler noted in his book Mein Kampf, hunger was then my faithful bodyguard, he never left me for a moment and partook of all I had. Back then, Hitler who was penniless had to earn a living by picking up odd jobs as a snow sweeper, porter, or a small-time painter. At one point, he even relied on a charity soup kitchen for survival. Hitler always wore a greasy black felt hat. His matted hair was brushed down over his forehead and covered his soiled collar, and he had stubble all over his chin. He looked like a tramp. Nevertheless, one thing differentiated him from other impoverished young people. He had none of the vices of youth, as he neither smoked nor drank, and had no encounters with women. He was a voracious reader, spending much of his days and evenings devouring books, so he appeared eccentric to those around him. Hitler studied extensively and read many books by German masters, such as Hegel, Nietzsche, and Wagner, which laid the foundation for the formation of Hitler's Nazi ideology. Of course, it needs to be emphasized that the thoughts of these famous artists did not express Nazi sentiments, Hitler had twisted their words to fit his beliefs. At this time, Hitler also began to pay close attention to politics. The mayor of Vienna Dr. Karl Luger became the object of Hitler's study. He began deliberately studying Dr. Luger's oratory skills and practiced them in front of audiences, paving his way on becoming a genius speaker. In the spring of 1913, Hitler left Vienna for Munich, Germany. Soon after World War I broke out, Hitler applied to join the Bavarian Reserve Infantry. After scarcely three months of training, he was sent to the front line to fight the Anglo-French forces. Hitler was decorated for bravery in the war and was awarded the Iron Cross Second Class, and later the Iron Cross First Class. However, Hitler was a peculiar fellow in the eyes of his comrades. When the other soldiers damned the war to hell, the prospect of a German defeat would cause him to fly into a rage and turn hysterical. Hitler neither enjoyed conversation with others nor was he as interested in women as other soldiers. Very few letters from home came for him. He never grumbled about lice, the stench mud, or the filth. After retiring from the military, the 30-year-old Hitler returned to Munich, where he was hired by the German army to work in the press and news bureau of the political department of the army's district command. One day in September of 1919, he received orders to conduct a probe into the German Workers' Party and to attend a party meeting. However, after this, Hitler was invited to join the German Workers' Party and became the seventh member of the Central Committee. The following year Hitler took over creating the party's propaganda. During this time, he often organized rallies and demonstrated extraordinary oratory and organizational skills. In the summer of the same year, the German Workers' Party was renamed the National Socialist German Workers' Party, or Nazi for short. Hitler used the character swastika as the sign of the Nazi Party, which later became the frightening symbol of Nazi Germany. After that, Hitler became the irrefutable leader of the Nazi Party, owing his success to his amazing organizational skills and propaganda techniques. However, an event in 1923 nearly ruined Hitler's career in politics. On November 8, Hitler organized the Nazis to launch a putsch at the Burgerbraukler in Munich, and abduct three men who held the power of the Bavarian state in their hands. He aimed to establish a new Bavarian government and march toward Berlin. However, Due to a power disparity between the Nazis and the government, the putsch failed. Hitler was arrested, and the Nazi party was ordered to disband. Would this be the end of Hitler's political career? 
The turn of event was astonishing. The special court that tried Hitler ended up serving as a forum for Hitler to give a rallying speech. Hitler impressed the German people with his eloquence and nationalistic fervor, and his name was emblazoned on the world's front pages. Hitler was jailed for only nine months and released from prison on December 20, 1924. As you can see, the putsch while ultimately a fiasco, made Hitler a national figure on a world-famous scale. He became a patriot and a hero in the eyes of many Germans. After being discharged from prison, Hitler developed the Nazi movement while simultaneously completing his autobiography Mein Kampf. The Nazi party organization continued to strengthen, and the number of party members increased from 27,000 in 1925 to 178,000 in 1929. At the same time, Hitler also established the Schutzstaffel and made the members personally swear a special oath of loyalty to him. In January 1932, Hitler ran for president of Germany. Though he lost to Hindenburg in both elections, he nearly doubled the Nazi vote in just two years from 1930. In the July election, the Nazis won 230 seats in the Reichstag, making them the largest party in parliament. As a result, on January 30, 1933, with the support of the German army and conservatives, the German president Hindenburg appointed Hitler as Chancellor of Germany. How did Hitler eventually rise to power? The author pointed out that, for one thing, a revenge sentiment had been brewing among the Germans for a long time, especially since the signing of the Versailles Treaty. The people longed to free themselves of the war's shame. Hitler's preaching of Nazism matched precisely with the expectations of the German people. Additionally, under the influence of long-term militaristic thinking, the German people believed that only war could save Germany. Several prime ministers of the Weimar Republic failed to resolve the Great Depression that had taken place since 1929, which left Germany in a continuing dire economic crisis. The German people had already lost confidence in the Republican government. After Hitler came to power, the first thing he did was to plan and carry out the Reichstag fire, thereby purging Ernst Torgler, the parliamentary leader of the communists. Following this, he carried out a mass slaughter of the communists, and then occupied the parliamentary seats that initially belonged to the Communist Party. On March 23, 1933, Hitler coerced the Reichstag to pass the law for removing the distress of people in Reich, which transferred the powers of legislation and constitutional amendments to the Reich cabinet. The laws enacted by the cabinet were to be drafted by the Chancellor and could deviate from the Constitution. Thus, Hitler was free of any constraint by the Reichstag. The following year, Hitler issued the law for the reconstruction of the Reich. Popular assemblies of the states were abolished, and their sovereign powers were transferred to the Reich. Also, Hitler's secret police deliberately attacked other parties in Germany by arresting some party members and disbanding others. Finally, by July 1934, the Nazi Party became the only political party in Germany. A one-party state controlled by the Nazis was established. In the same year, President Hindenburg died. At noon on the same day, the German government announced the abolishment of the president title. Hitler became the Führer, Reich Chancellor and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces. At this point, Hitler had achieved his goal for authoritarian rule. After Hitler seized power, he began to implement laws to complete the Nazification of Germany in many areas, such as politics, economy, education, judiciary, culture and agriculture. In the late summer of 1934, the author of the book Shire recorded his experience of the profound changes happening in Germany while he was living and working there. What Shire found impressive and confusing was that, despite Hitler's nearly unbridled and brutal dictatorship, the German people champion the government with great zeal. Why was this? Perhaps you can learn more by delving into our bookie Escape from Freedom by Eric Fromm, a famous psychologist, psychoanalyst, and philosopher. Today we are just sharing limited bookie. To unlock more key insights of world-class bestseller, please download our app. Just search for B-O-O-K-E-Y at Apple Store or Google Play. You will get 7 days free trail with more features.